loading up in the bugs. I have all my stuff. Big storm's rolling in, so I got about 48 hours window. I'm gonna try and get in, find a big moose. I'm gonna try out a new spot. Done a lot of research, hope it's gonna pay off, and go for a hop. paid off this year. I did a bunch of scouting, tearing apart maps, looking at moose biology and figured out a new area and there's a, there's a herd of moose right up there but uh, this is really shifty winds, hard to land but I saw a group of bulls up here that I think has a real nice one in it. So I'm gonna get the camp set up and get secure and try and make a plan for the morning. Pretty cold last night, like real cold, but I stayed warm enough in the tent. Um, it's early, it's about 7.30. I wanna get down here to this creek drainage, but there's a bunch of fog rolling in, kinda right at the right, wrong time, so I'm gonna have to kinda let that burn off and just kinda glass around the hills, but those, those moose were up here yesterday. And then that bull was, that 58 inch bull was down in the creek bottom, working his way up last night. So I wanna get down there and see if there's any, any cows maybe with that bull. And there was some more moose further up the drainage I need to get a look at too. So hopefully this fog will move out, burn off, and can find a big moose and go shoot him. Oh. There's moose everywhere. It's freaking insane. Well, I got a good bull spotted. He's about nine minutes, maybe more, which I did the math, 7.75. Times nine, he's, he's close to seven, he's a hog. And uh, I don't think he can, I really can get any closer. He stands up, you might get a bullet though. In long range hunting, we typically do a couple practice trigger pulls without a bullet chamber to prevent trigger panic and to help calm the nerves. If you can comfortably say that if I had a round chamber, that moose would be dead, then it's time to take your shot. And that's what Adam is doing right now.
Well, Moose is dead. So I kind of do his last kicks and in the phone scope, move his rack around. He's he's big. He was 775, and uh, for yardage when he stood up, had the night force scope cranked all the way in, and uh, the 22 power a minute in the scope, one hash mark equals one minute of angle. At 775, that's 7.75 inches or seven and three quarter. And he took up when he turned and looked at me perfectly broadside, did a couple cow calls to get him to stand up. He was every bit of 10, it looked like, which I believe would put him well over 70. I can't, he's a big, big moose. I'm not apprehensive, but now I'm sitting here thinking like, man, Grenda, what did you do? I'm not an idiot, it's just, it's like long division. It's a lot of work, you gotta take your time, start chipping away, it's a mountain of work. You just gotta start chipping away at it one piece at a time. Got a lot of parachute cord and uh, it's gonna be a good time. Kind of speaks us right now. This is a really old, mature moose, I think, and I couldn't be happier. He's got some kind of funky fronts and like a big crab claw on this side, and uh, wasn't sure I was going to shoot him. I have this problem. It's probably good. I want to shoot big moose, but I kind of underjudge him, and that's what I did on my big 68-inch bull. And I didn't want to do that on this thing, and I was looking in the scope and. I could tell he was big, at least 60, and then when he stood up, he took up what I thought was 10 minutes in the scope, which was a lot, which would have put him well over 70. I put a tape on him. He's at least 72. I could probably, probably he will go 73 or 74, and my my dream's always been to get a, to get a big bull 70, and uh, this is a dream come true. I'm just super fortunate and grateful to be able to have a super cub and live in this great country and go and land and hunt on my own and provide for my wife and kids. I'm excited to get him aged and cut out his lower teeth and uh, see what he is because he's a magnum of a bull. And uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me. At least he died kind of on a flat spot. I'm gonna start working and send out a couple messages and try and figure out some help. And It's a long ways to the airplane, but at least I can see the airplane and uh, yeah. Really happy. Got the camera a little wet. I'll keep it waist up because I am naked. Oh. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Oh, oh I don't know if the camera's gonna even work. Everything got wet. I already have one pair of pants wet, so I'm wearing my rain pants, and then so I just take those off. So I am naked from the waist down to cross that, and it got even deeper mid-channel said a little bit of a prayer and uh, made it across so now I'm gonna take this go up get the bow my spying scope some gear I dropped off the camera got wet hope it still works it's filming now and uh, start getting meat up to a place where I can land which I think the airplanes about as close as I can get Good to see, but this is the back end of a moose. Tracked it down, shot it, solo. Got 25% of the moose out, had a friend come in, help with the rest. We flew it out, big storm is rolling in, and uh, just got over here in town. We've had the moose hanging, it's been pretty cold, so we were able to hang the moose up. You come over here, um, pretty particular about meat, so I got some hair and grass on here. It's really hard to do a moose. Uh, but we're going to carve off all this outer layer and it'll be fresh, pink, super good meat. And these are all the quarters, the ribs, and then all the boned out meat. And so we should have about 500 pounds of meat by the time we're done. Finished and cut. Lots of work to do and better get started. This next episode is really exciting. Trevor and Tana both will be hunting moose, so stay tuned.